Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Black Tower Show. I am your host, Nate Ford. And I am your co-host, Jake Fox. On the Black Tower Show today, Mr. Greg Palace, investigative journalist. He reports for the BBC and The Guardian. Uh, you can read his reports at gregpalast.com. Greg Palast is the author of the New York Times bestsellers The Best Democracy Money Can Buy and Armed Madhouse. He's best known in the U.S. for uncovering Katherine Harris's purge of black voters from Florida Rolls in 2000. And he has a new book coming out, Billionaires and uh, Bandits, How to Steal an Election in Nine Easy Steps. And we're going to talk about that with Mr. Greg Palast, our guest on the Black Tower Show. Thank you so much for coming on again, Mr. Palast. Hey, glad to be with you, Nate, Jake. And by the way, it's Billionaires and Ballot Bandits. Billionaires and Ballot Bandits. Ballot Bandits. At BallotBandits.org, it'll be out in a week. Uh, you can get it and uh, order it now, and you, you should. <laughs> and I had a chance online to preview a little bit of uh, Billionaires and Ballot Bandits. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to you about the Help America Vote Act. I found this is an astounding part of... Uh, of your book, um, the sort of r reformed voting process where there's digital lists and now the 50 secretaries of state become empowered to reject voter registration. So you see like a consolidation of power, and what they're doing is they're abusing that. And I was wondering if you could uh, elaborate on that point. Sure. Uh, it's, it began uh, for, for people who may know uh, my work, Greg Palace for uh, BBC, uh, I uncovered back in 2000 how Katherine Harris had knocked off tens of thousands of black folk off the voter rolls of Florida before the election. She called them in 2000 felons, mm. couldn't vote, but in fact they, their only crime was voting while black. Well, there was the election. So in response to re illegally removing innocent voters, which Harris agreed she did, but she said it was a mistake, okay, mm. well, the... There was a commission set up to avoid such mistakes and come up with ways to, to uh, fix the system. And so they came up with, uh, and this was uh, uh, pointed, put together by George Bush, who obviously benefited from the, uh, from the scam in the first place. So um, they created something, uh, a law, called the Help America Vote Act. Now, of course, when George Bush and his uh, and his little henchman, uh, Carl Rove, tell you they're going to help you vote, yeah. look out. So they took, so what the reason the black people were thrown off the rolls is that they used massive centralized computer databases and used that to purge the voter rolls of people they considered suspect. So rather than ending that practice, they did the opposite. The Help America Vote Act, it was very, you know, the usual Orwellian inversion. Instead of prohibiting the practice, they ordered all 50 secretaries of state to go to centralize their voter rolls, computerize their voter rolls, and then start purging voters they considered suspect. Now, when you give a secretary of state, mm -hmm. like Catherine Harris, Ken Blackwell, anyone, Democrat or Republican, the right to, to simply, by their decision, to remove your name from a voter roll, without any proof, without any proceeding. Um, is, is there, there's nobody imagine. monitoring these people. Zero. And this is one of the problems. Right. So one of the problems is it's, it's horrific because if you lose your right to vote, that only happens if you commit in most states a felony crime. Right. So basically you're being punished for a felony crime um, on the basis of someone's so-called suspicion. And you have to understand, we've had, the past two years we've had 22 million people, I want to repeat that, 22 million names purged from the voter roll. And we've had four known cases of voter fraud a year in the past four years. Four. So that you're, you're basically talking about over a million voters removed from the voter rolls for each known case of fraud. Um, the truth is, is that if uh, people who, have, uh, who are in prison tend not to um, get, uh, you know, get extra time. Because we know where they are, we know where they live, and if they try to vote from prison... From a, a, on a felony count, uh, that's illegal. By the way, some people believe that if you've ever had a felony conviction on your record, you got in trouble, that you can't vote. In New York, for example, you can vote after you've served your time. I mean, you could. I, I don't want to discourage people. So many people don't vote, and you got to get back in the system. You can vote as long as you've served your time. But anyway, but that's, but the game is that the Help America Vote Act. You know, I don't need 
the politicians tell, helping me vote. Right. You know, and, and that's the problem. As soon as they help you vote, we're in trouble. It seems that's, to me that it's, one in, it's key, uh, yeah, that's one of the key chapters of billionaires and ballot banning. Right. It seems to me that it's intentionally difficult. And but you offer some advice. I mean, this the system isn't completely corrupt. There is a way that we can still get our vote in there. That's and one right. of the things that you say is to vote early. Yeah. Well, a few things. One, I have. If you go to, in fact, you don't have to get the book. If you just go right now to ballotbandits.org, you can download the seven ways to beat the ballot bandits. Uh, there's nine. And people keep asking me. There's nine ways that they steal the election. Seven ways they can. We can prevent that because um, the difference is that they're always two steps ahead. Right. Seven ways to beat the ballot ban. It gives you seven specific things you can do to try to protect yourself. And one one of them is to uh, is to vote early. Every state, including New York, has gives you the right to vote um, one or two weeks ahead. Find out where. Um, it's not your usual polling. It may be your usual polling place or somewhere else. You don't have to wait for election day. The advantage is, is that if they say, "Hey, wait a minute, you've been your name was removed because uh, uh, my own my own assistant, believe it or not, who uh, lives in your area, in in the Rochester area, has uh, was showed up two years ago to vote." And a congressional election, and was turned away, saying that he, he was an inactive voter. Wow! Went in on election day. Well, there's nothing he could, you know, at that point to fight it is nearly impossible. So you go in a week early. <laughs> and and the other thing is, I tell people, register to vote and and, and re-register. What I, what do I mean by that? You think you're registered? He said, "Well, I'm registered to vote. I you know I voted for uh, Obama or McCain or um, you know whatever. Uh, I'm registered. You think so?" But you ain't necessarily just like my assistant in New York. Very typical. There's a million ways that they can that they use to get your name off the voter rolls. You better find out if you're still registered by going to the website of the Office of the Secretary of State or your county elections commissioner. So there's kind of things you can do to make sure that they don't swipe your vote. Right. So our guest on the Black Tower Show, Mr. Greg Pallast, we're broadcasting on 1590 AM WASB, Brockport, Rochester, 1310 AM WRSB, Canandaigua, Rochester. If you'd like to call in, the number is 585-637-7040. I'm joined here by Mr. Jake Fox. Hey, how you doing, Greg? Hey. Um, I was uh, reading a piece uh, yesterday by Amy Goodman at Democracy Now! And they were on the floor of the uh, RNC convention. Um, uh, taking shots, trying to get questions. Uh, specifically, there was a situation with David Koch uh, that they reported on that was really interesting to me. Um, the networks were uh, focusing on a shot of Romney after his speech, going into the crowd, shaking hands with people um, in the front row. And he was about to shake hands with David Koch and the network went to a shot of two like beautiful blonde girls, and then a larger shot <laughs> of uh, the the convention building itself. Right. And then they went back to Romney, shaking hands with other various people. Well, Democracy Now was there with their camera, uh -huh. and they and it showed his he almost had a embrace with David Koch, and they shared a laugh. <laughs> and then he went on to the next person. You mentioned a split. Which, among the elite in, in past uh, interviews I've, I've heard you yeah. do uh, when it comes to giving money to Obama or Romney, the, the networks seem to be uh, on, on the Romney side of the split. They were, they were protecting him a little bit there, it seemed. Oh, absolutely. Well, let's put it this way. They are acting, they have like a pool camera, remember that. Um, and so they were probably told, I am have no doubt that they were told, you don't take a picture of Romney with Coke. Because they know that that's, that that's Romney hugging his checkbook, his sugar daddy. For those who don't know who David Koch is, he personally is worth $20 billion. His brother oh, okay. Charles, who's his partner, is worth another $20 billion, mm -hmm. And their two other brothers are worth about $3 billion each. They're about a $50 billion family. These are the number one funders of, um, two of the number one of the top funders of Mitt Romney. They have a group called Americans for Prosperity, mainly their prosperity. Mm. <laughs> they want America to be for their prosperity. Right. And I talk about in the book 
that the Koch brothers are what are called by the Justice Department Target 67C. I actually have a chapter called Target 67C um, in there, and it is about my investigations with the FBI of the Koch brothers who were stealing oil. They made their money the old-fashioned way. They stole it from Indians. They were stealing oil from uh, Native reservations. There was an indictment drawn up. I'll even, you know, if you get billionaires and ballot bandits, you will see right in there, there is a, uh, um, um, a, I was able to get my hands on, the draft felony indictment of the Koch brothers. Had called Target 67C by the FBI and for for theft on a native uh, uh, from federal land and native reservation because it's also that's also federal property and um, the uh, but they bought themselves a couple senators they had the federal prosecutor fired I kid you not they had their own lawyer uh, put in as the federal prosecutor and that's how they you know were it, they basically if you name the prosecutor you name the judges you name the president. You can do whatever you want, and they do. It's incredible That's the problem. And so the other thing is, they are not going to let. There is no way that the Romney gang are going to let um, the public have pictures of Romney hugging his owners, his landlords. I can hear the uh, ballots getting thrown away right now. <laughs> They're all well, you know, I mean, what happens when they get? Then they lose access. In other words, that's their big fear. Oh, we won't have access. In other words, they let them go down and take those pictures, you know, down with Romney. As soon as they take a, a prohibited picture, if they broadcast a prohibited picture, they're in trouble. You think it's that careful? It's interesting. Oh, yeah. Is it that carefully? Oh, yeah. Uh, constructed because they have the a, whole scene. Because remember, you have to, if you've seen from the top shots, you will see a camera that's, that's on wheels fall going, uh, with the cameraman going backwards. Remember, he's working you, that these people have um, Secret Service protection. So you need special approval by the Secret Service, and you're, to get that, you got to uh, kind of deal also with the Romney campaign. So they are, di- in effect, the campaigns themselves are directing where the cameras shoot and what they shoot and what they can't shoot. So that in a, they they, uh, they completely these are all you know it's theater, it's not news, um, and they know that that type of shot is absolutely can be used against them, politically devastating. And I'm glad that uh, Amy busted them on that. And that's why Amy ain't going to ever be allowed on the floor right, <laughs> right next to the candidate, because they're going to, you know, because they only will take controlled people. And I know this from working with the networks myself as a reporter. Um, they will go for what they say, we can't lose access. God mm. forbid they lose access. And those shots that you saw of Romney going, that, again, is controlled by the Romney campaign. It's a, call, it's a pool shot. There's only one guy allowed to take that photo. That's and okay. the Romney campaign controls it completely. Well, um, Amy Goodman miraculously did make it onto the floor of the RNC this year, and she was trying to get to David Koch and asking him a question, of, a really good question, does concentration of wealth undermine democracy? And they formed a human wall around him, <laughs> and he was cupping his ear Saying sorry, I can't hear you, and giggling with his buddies. Uh, yeah, of course. Well, here it's, it's like a the, black hole of evil. But you know, uh, let's put it this way: that when um, Charles Koch, his brother, his partner, uh, you know, when I say that they were involved in Indi- in theft from Indian land, this is not like four levels down. The, we followed the trucks. The trucks; these were stealing uh, oil from stripper wells. Basically, it was a, a good scam. They had the right to take the oil, but they weren't. They weren't um, paying for all of it. They would put down 100 barrels when they took 120. And you follow trucks back to uh, Oklahoma Loading Dock, and right there is this big, tall guy telling everyone, steal more. Uh, I want more. And that was Charles Koch himself. He was out there in Oklahoma saying, I want you to steal more. And one of his executives, who was wired, who was wired, asked him, why are you doing this? Because, you know, he's already, already a billionaire, even then, as few, some years ago. He's already multi-billionaire. He says, you know, why are you, why are you sitting there in the dock telling these people to take 30 bucks worth of oil from an Indian? Right? <laughs> it's like, and, and Charles Koch said, and this is very important, I have it at the very front of the book. Koch said, I want my fair share, and that's all of it. <laughs> oh, my God. And so oh my gosh, that's right. how these guys think, statement. I want all of it. 
They're, they're not sharing. Their fair share is all of it. And um, so it's not a matter of, see, in a way it's almost a naive question to say, does money poison politics? They are the politics. The politicians mm-hmm. are just the, the, you know, they're the fist. The, the politicians are the glove puppets. And, and, and in Romney's case, I mean, it's hard to imagine a guy who's worth a quarter billion, but he has, he's down on hands and knees begging to these guys because they own, and, and, and one thing you'll get in billionaires and ballot bandits is not only how the, the crimes that Koch committed to get his billions and why he has to own the White House to keep himself immune from this, but how they're doing it. They have a computer program called Themis, the Koch brothers. Mm. T-H-E-M-I-S, Themis. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, think of the Matrix or something. It is an ultra system of it has information on every single American alive and, and, and then some. And massive, massive, massive database. They are using this for basically election manipulation. Remember I talked about purging those voter rolls? Uh, Where do you think they get the list for the for the purge? They're getting it from the Coke there's two uh, there's two computer programs. One is Themis and one is Data Trust, which is controlled by Carl Rove. And um, Rove, by the way, at a uh, private breakfast, uh, said he's working very closely with the Koch brothers because there are two different organizations, two different databases. If those two databases, as, as Rove was saying they were, will be combined, I mean, you know, the FBI has nothing on these guys in terms of information. So it chronicles every human being. So now he has the power to have, to have like a definite... Uh list of everybody and then you're as, saying as you as can as combine a, that with the fact massive, that you can manip- they have the power to manipulate it right. through some of these okay. legislations things like that well what they do is that they create the list the purging list and they start out they had a company called database technologies choice point and see so when the for example when i first busted the, the whole system back in florida in 2000 that was the early days they had a database company a choice point which by the way now is whose names have been changed several times. It's the guys that now run, do all your credit check stuff, right? They got their credit reports. Um, Axion and those guys, um, same company. Um, the, what they were doing is creating these databases for the purpose of giving them to the Secretary of State of Florida and saying, here are felons. They weren't felons. What they did was brilliant matching stuff so that you had, for example, and here, this is a real case, uh, and this is even after Harris left. They're doing this now in Florida. Uh, they had, there was a guy uh, named Robert Moore who was convicted of a crime in Ohio. Because he was convicted of a felony crime in Ohio, a woman, uh, this guy, a, and he's a white guy who committed the crime, a black woman named Bobby Moore, B-O-B-B-I, not Robert, but Bobby Moore, right. lost her vote in Florida. They said, you're a criminal. Because... She had a name because... Her name, Bobby, mm. diminutive of Robert Moore. And by the way, do you have any idea how many Robert Moores there yeah, are? But that's not the Bobby human Moore, being. Bob They're two Moore, different Bob human Moore, they, Yeah. They're two different human beings. How, yeah, how can that happen? Because they said, and then, and then they say, oh, well, sorry, showed up on a felon purge list. And the thing is, they don't let you know. You show up. I, there was a, a war veteran named w- Willie Steen that I found. Mm. Uh, he showed up to vote with his five-year-old son, young black man, I mean, youngish black man, because he's a Gulf War veteran, worked in a hospital, um, never got a parking ticket in his life. He showed with his five-year-old son to show him what democracy was all about. Well, the kid got a very good lesson, because they told him, sorry, you're a felon. You're a, <laughs> you're a criminal. His five-year-old kid's sitting kid's there, you're not. a criminal, you can't vote. This is incredible. And, you know, but he was, he was a black man, and, of course, a young black man. So, that, you know, what's his chance of challenging? Mm. And then you get on Fox News where the guys that put this crap together, like this guy John Fund, um, was uh, he's saying, there's no evidence that even one single person was wrongly purged from the voter rolls. They just say it. It's a complete, absolute, stone-cold lie. But if you go to Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, you'll see, actually, I show you those purge lists I got. You'll see Bobby Moore and versus Robert Moore. And by the way, they know, they know the black voters because in these states like Florida, your race is right next to your name. And in the case of, of Bobby Moore, who lost her vote, it says B-L-A. And the, and the criminal, the convicted criminal, said W-H-I. 
Okay? And in the case of Willie Steen, who lost his vote, his legal name is Willie Steen, there was a guy named Willie Osteen, with a little O, you know, O apostrophe. Willie Osteen, who committed a crime. But Willie Steen, the, the Gulf War veteran, who's BLA, black, lost his vote. That's, and so that's why, um, you know, and then you, that's why I say in billionaires and ballot banners, I'm trying to make that connection between the Cokes and their billions and the ballot thievery. So where, I mean, where do the lawyers come in to defend the law? Because this is clearly illegal, right? Ah, well, one of the problems is the Help America Vote Act is the law. Is the law, uh, but now, yes, things like wrongful voter purges. First, you have to find them. I mean, I, it's not like someone said, "Okay, you can go." I had to get the disks. I had to crack it. I had to spend mm. we had to spend hundreds of hours tracking people down, getting the information. Because they don't make it easy for you. It to just do. gets muddied up, in and the then system. you know, I mean, yeah, we had the NAACP sued the state of Florida, but in 2000, but that was after the election. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, in 2004, we discovered more of this stuff. There's other tricks like caging, purging, um, spoiling. There's nine ways that they knock out your vote and delete. Coming up with something, what? <laughs> just hit the delete button on the computer. Well, delete. Yes, actually, I call that in the book in Ballot Band. It's uh, we call it press to digitizing. Uh, which is you know like because uh, fi- mixing digital with uh, with you know the w- French word for magic, and um, a lot of people talk about computers as being dangerous, Nate, because it's um, because they can switch your vote. Actually, the main way that people lose votes in computer voting is that they just unplug the computer. They just literally it just disappears. If they try to change your vote, that's a much more complex and hard thing to do. But people vote by zip code, basically. You give me someone's zip code, and I pretty much tell you where they're voting or how they're voting. They know in certain precincts, you, you, precincts tend to go, you know, 80-20. So they know African That's why rate. That's why this is racial targeting, African-American, Hispanic, uh, Jewish voters, Native American voters. These are all solid Democratic voters. You knock out those precincts. You create a problem in those precincts where the computer, in Florida, for example, in the black precincts, they simply didn't give the poll workers the passwords to open the computers. Mm. So that voting was delayed three or four hours. People had had to go to work. They couldn't vote. So that it, with computers, there's so many glitches that simply eliminate the vote, make it disappear, and they go, oh, it's a glitch, that they don't have to do anything so sexy as to change your vote from one thing to the other, which is complicated. If they simply do, there's simple things that can just make sure that the computers simply break down, don't work, lose your vote, it's gone, it disappears, we're sorry. Um, you know, you rub a cat, you hit the machine, you elect a different president. You know, you so to, it's, yeah. and you have that's to remember how that. The, the, the computer game is, is really played. You have to remember that, I mean, you have to remind yourself that these elections, they're coming down to the matter of thousands of votes. What you're talking about, Carl Rove is saying that if we can create just a little bit of stir in the black community, in other words, sort of let's just get rid of the black vote, then Obama, you know, it has a sort of effect. Um, yeah, I mean, is Obama oh, going yeah, to, fact, you know, is. That's exactly right. Let's not forget that officially, officially, the presidency, of the, the presidency of the United States in 2000 was decided by 537 votes. The presidency of the United States was decided by 500 votes. So 300 vote shift, and that was that would have changed the presidency, and Bush would have never been president. So I mean, it's this is you know That's people say, oh, well, my vote doesn't count. Wow, you just heard something. I mean, the presidency of the United States was determined by a couple hundred votes. Now, Karl Rove has actually said, if we can suppress the black vote. By one quarter, and I, he's saying it he's straight up there. By one quarter of one percent in swing states like Carol, like the Carolinas, like right now, on Monday the Democrats opened their convention in Charlotte, um, North Carolina, and you know there, if they're looking, if they can simply knock out a quarter of one percent of the black vote, the Republicans will win that state. Now we know that the African-American vote is coming out for Obama. They did a weird, there was a poll recently which was stunning, in which not one person in the African-American community called, not one, said they'd vote for Romney. 
So they know they're not going to win the African American vote or or other ethnic minorities. They're, they, so they're just going to knock out the vote by, oops, the computer didn't work. Oops, oh my God, you're an inactive voter. You're a felon voter. Your uh, name is suspicious. You sign your name the wrong way. And if you mail in your ballot, don't mail in. By the way, don't mail in your ballot. Don't go postal. If you can avoid, if you can, you know, if you have to, you have to. But if you can avoid it, bring it in and bring it in early. There you go. Um, if you, yeah, mail in the vote. If you, you know, don't mail it in because any little, like, if you use, if you don't remember exactly how you registered and you use a different signature, you left out a middle initial or you added a middle initial, or you change your signature slightly, they have every reason to knock out your vote. They don't like the stamps you used. They don't like the thickness of the envelope, even if they gave you the envelope. Mailing in your ballot is a, is almost a, a a request to have them throw it in the garbage, and they will. About two million mail-in ballots, absentee ballots, will be uh, disqualified. Greg right. Palast on the Black Tower Show, we're broadcasting 1590 AM WASB, Brockport, Rochester, 1310 AM WRSB, Canandaigua, Rochester. If you'd like to call in, it's 585-637-7040. Just like to thank our sponsors just one second here. Galleria Pizza, down 16 East Main Street, 18 years operating down to, uh, downtown Rochester. Inside the Reynolds Arcade, me and Jake went there the other day. Galleria Pizza, you got to go down Good there. stuff. That's what I'm saying. What do we get down there? We got some chicken parmesan. Got some chicken parm subs. Greg, you like chicken? Mod Everyone, who doesn't like chicken parmesan? Come on. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, Are you in New York? Are you in New York? Yeah, okay. So you know what we're talking about here. Get a nice yeah. bag. Dude, somebody said something about the bagels one time down there, and I didn't believe them. I'm like, oh, great, yeah, the bagels are better down there. <laughs> I mean, they literally are amazing bagels. It's incredible. Yeah, you got to go to the right places. You What's the right place? Can you give us you a tip? Go like, um, you got to go places like um, uh, B&H. You have to go. Uh, there's some really good places. Mm. So those so, are the places you got to go to. I want to talk oh. about uh, Jake Fox. Yeah, um, I got um, a question here. Um, what is the ends for the Koch brothers who are reportedly putting four hundred million dollars into this two thousand twelve election? What uh, what are their goals here? That's a lot they of money. They have a couple. They they have several. One, as I said, they they commit crimes and they gotta they gotta keep maintain their impunity. Like I said, they are stealing money from. Indian reservations, they were committing criminal acts, of, uh, criminal violations of the environmental, uh, of the, uh, of our, the environmental laws. So they have to maintain a situation in which they control who's prosecutor and to make sure that there's no prosecution. That's one. Mm-hmm. Second, they got to make sure that they don't get taxed on their billions. Uh, very important. They also have some very specific desires, like, for example, the XL Keystone Pipeline. Now, one of the things, that, one of the stories that kind of break in the book, because no one seems to have figured out, people keep saying the Cokes are involved, have to be involved in the Keystone Pipeline, which they're trying to run flash down through the entire United States from Canada to Texas, which is weird to take oil from Canada to Texas, if you think about it. Um, but that's what they're doing. Why? And because the Cokes don't own the pipeline, they don't own the oil that's coming in. The answer is, is that the pipeline's going to their refineries on the Gulf Coast where they, the oil from Canada, because it's heavy crude and heavily subsidized, is dirt cheap. And their refineries are specifically designed for that heavy oil, only that heavy oil, which right now they get from Venezuela. And, and Hugo Chavez ain't giving the Koch brothers a discount for that oil. That difference between the price from Chavez in Venezuela and the price from Canada is worth billions of dollars. It's, in fact, there's a difference between those refineries losing money and those refineries making billions. So they need that pipeline, and Obama's not going to give it to them. That's a big problem for them. So this isn't really an ideological difference. They're not, uh, no. they're not for the assault weapons ban or against the assault weapons ban. They're not really... They're kind of against it, but uh, they're not Republicans. The Koch brothers, I want to emphasize this, the Koch brothers are not Republicans. And that's what makes it, in a way, even more frightening. They don't care, okay? Right. They, in fact, David Koch ran against Ronald Reagan. Ran against Ronald Reagan, saying Reagan was too left-wing. <laughs> he ran as, on the libertarian ticket oh. against Ronald Reagan, saying Reagan was too left-wing. They don't like Republicans. 
They, mm. uh, they and they really they're libertarians. They don't like the um, you know, and they definitely don't like uh, salt ban stuff. But you know, on the other hand, they're for gay marriage. They don't they don't care. They're they're, they're total uh, libertarian style. But as far as they're concerned, this is not as um, one of their fellow billionaires. Ken Langone said, uh, this is not a political donation. This is an investment. This is business, okay? It's business. It's just like, you know, if you said Michael Corleone and The Godfather, it's business, okay? Right. You know, it's just, you have to understand, this is business. They're making an investment. The Keystone Pipeline, if they, if they can't bring that in, that's billions of dollars. So four hundred million, it'll be about. They'll raise four hundred million, but it'll be about sixty of their own money. They said, um, and that's just like nothing compared to what they get in return. I mean, the, the return on investment in politicians is astonishing, just astonishing. What you get in return if you've got the money and the influence is, you know, that there's no business that that earns that type of rate of return. Getting. Getting back to Amy Goodman's mm-hmm. uh, question to David Koch that he mm-hmm. never answered, how much is this concentration of wealth we have in this country undermining our democracy? It's replacing our democracy, and that's the problem. Because guys, we have politicians who are responding to the cash, because that's what makes the difference. I mean, who you know, Romney was disliked by the Republican Party. But he had so much money, he drowned his opponents. Whatever you may think of his opponents, you know, Rick Santorum with his, you know, the, you know uh, who ripped his uh, sleeves off his sweater or whatever, no matter how weird these guys were, the reason they lost is that they didn't have the money. They got crushed. The marketing money. Right, that was bad. Obama had the money in both his primary and the general election last time. He way outspent McCain, which is extraordinary for, uh, for a Democrat. And, but this time that won't happen. So what's happening is, is that money is replacing the vote. And, you know, does it always replace the vote? Is it hopeless? Absolutely not. We've had many movements in this country against very powerful forces, from the labor movement, the civil rights movement, environmental movement, populist movements, um, which have overcome the money powers. But, you know, it's a lot of work. Uh, it doesn't, you know, that's why I write the book, because I keep saying, it's not, like, it's not like we have to stop. The civil rights movement continues on. You know, we, we celebrate Martin Luther King Day, but, um, you know, you, you can't just go to the beach. You know, the celebrating uh, King means every day it's, uh, it's a fight. That's, there's no shortcut. Well, right. Texas was just found by a federal court, a George Bush appointee, of violating the Voting Rights Act. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, uh, that's, that's vital. I mean, the, the other thing is I just wrote um, a, a piece from Billionaires and Ballot Bandits about um, Congressman Tim Griffin, who worked for Karl Rove, and his assistant is now the campaign chairman for Mitt Romney. And this guy uh, was involved in something called voter caging, where they send letters to soldiers who are way overseas, so the letters come back undelivered, and then they challenge their vote. You're talking about guys who challenge the vote of black soldiers in Afghanistan. You like that? I mean, these guys are creeps. Uh. And that's a straight-up violation of the Voting Rights Act. Bobby Kennedy works with me and, and wrote the intro of the book. Um, and uh, he and I wrote an article for Rolling Stone last time on, on this game. Um, you know, he said these guys should be in jail. These guys right. should be in jail for these violations. Well, and rewarded. once in a while, you will have a judge stand up and say, you know, they got lifetime appointment. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them are just in there for lifetime. They're creepy, but there are a few guys who say, I'm in here for life. I can now stand up and say, okay, this will not stand. This is against the law. You're not doing this. April so, 4th, 2012. I, I want to get this story out here. Um, I, was, I read this. Uh, mm-hmm. This is from your book billionaires and ballot bandits you write um april 4th uh, 2012 77 year old greek pharmacist he wrote a note and he, he wrote quote i find no solution for a dignified end before i start sifting through garbage to feed myself end quote then he shot himself the government cuts his pension as part of an austerity plan to pay foreign creditors namely people like the vulture singer and i want you to uh explain what's happening there because this is also 
Um, Singer is a guy who has his hand so much in Romney mm-hmm. and um, so many other politicians. So can you unravel this for yeah. us, the connection? Yes. Um, Paul Singer, um, known as Singer the Vulture, and I didn't give him that name. He's known as the Vulture because he preys upon the weakest, whether it's people, corporations, or nations. Right. Greece was in trouble, so he grabbed Greeks. Basically, he's a repo man. He grabbed Greek bonds, debts of the government, and said, pay, I want you to pay me 500% of what I paid. This required the government, so the government, it was blackmail, and the Greek government gave into it, but that meant absolute devastation for the Greek government. Now, who's Paul, Paul the Vulture Singer? Say, okay, there's a creepy guy, but what does that have to do with me? The answer is, is that he started the Romney Super PAC, the Kochs have their organization. Karl Rove has his. But Romney's super PAC is called Restore Our Future. And the guy who kicked it off with the first million-dollar donation is Paul the Vulture Singer. He's also the number one donor to Paul Ryan. So if you wonder where Ryan came from, why Ryan's on the ticket, that's Paul Singer. Mm. You know, a f- couple of years ago, I, I did my first... Um, investigation of the Koch brothers in 96 and wrote about them in 98 for The Guardian. I said, you know, the richest guys you never heard of. Well, now people have heard of the Kochs. But Singer is mm. still under the radar. Right. But he had a private meeting. He had private meetings with Rove and Condi Rice and the delegations uh, and the, uh, uh, the big shots in the party private dinner with them the other night. They know mm. he's the guy. In fact, as they say, he's actually more influential than the Kochs. He's the most influential guy in the Romney campaign of the moneyed men, of the billionaires. He's a multi-billionaire. And the problem is, is that this guy is, is basically running amok, destroying the world economy. And, in fact, one of the reasons he, he, he really didn't care that much about McCain four years ago. He, he didn't uh, give him any support. This time, he's gone in huge for Romney. And why? Because Obama... And Secretary of State Clinton went into court and said, this guy's tactics are a threat to the world's financial system. Hmm. And so now he's going to make sure that Obama pays big time. Now, Obama hmm. did that at the behest of some of the big banks who were thought this guy had, run, had gone renegade in the finance community. But that's, you know, so it's, so, you know, it's not like Obama was doing this in the public interest per se, but it is in the public interest, even though... The uh, I, you know, when the when the banks are on your side, <laughs> right. I wonder you know when how creepy it is. I wonder when I hear Romney talk about cutting welfare, mm-hmm. I, it makes me think that, I mean, we're heading into a direction where these austerity measures and things. I wonder how much of that is because of people like uh, the Vulture Singer and his idea of kind of his mentality of business of buying up things that are dying and getting rid of it he's kind of making our country like an efficient sort of business you know what i mean his well, that yeah. mentality is starting to seep into how we're dealing with people in their real lives like human lives you know what i mean and it's it's so scary you know i don't know very um because they have what a, a kind of social darwin idea or what they call creative destruction uh, there was a philosopher, Schumpeter, that they follow. Mm. Believed in creative destruction. Okay, mm. We're going to have to destroy the U.S. economy, destroy the Greek economy, the Eurozone, destroy, destroy Latin American Is economy. it destruction, though? Mm-hmm. Mm. We have to destroy them so they can be rebuilt as this free market wonderland. I always think of it as like milking it. Milking well, the people, yeah, obviously, cutting all the costs. Their, their well. idea of destruction is very interesting because these guys, unlike, you know, un, unlike other old, the old industrialists and robber barons who actually kind of built, at least built something, you yeah. know, it's Carnegie and the steel mills and General Motors and Sloan and all that stuff, Ford, these are robber barons and sometimes very brutal guys, but in the end they still built something. These guys make their money by destroying things. These guys make their money. When the housing market died, they, these guys made a f- billions when the housing market collapsed. They lose when things go well. Hmm. Their whole business, the reason why the vulture is called the vulture, is that 
He wants things to die, and that's how he makes a profit. Hmm. He's quite brilliant. Um, he doesn't really like me too much. In fact, his goons called up BBC television and say, we have a file on Greg Pallast. Oh, they got a file on you. <laughs> what an honor, though. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great, because I just didn't think this multi-billionaire really cared about me. So, like, the idea that, uh, I guess he felt me twist his tail or something a bit, but, you know, uh, so that was, I, I, I did feel honored. We need but, to get um, bankrolled by, we need to get, to, we need to get bankrolled. Isn't there sort of, isn't there somebody on our team that can <laughs> bankroll us and we can come out with a commercial pointing the finger at the vulture? Yeah. Well, Let's I mean, do that. all I have on my, for the money, all I have on my side is kind of the Hollywood people like, you know, uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, you know, those guys back yeah. me up. Yeah. Um, I'm not, yeah, really. Well, that's... Um, you know, that's about the only way I can survive it. But um, <laughs> the problem is that we don't have, on the public interest side, people who make, make, can make billions by people dying, literally, or by economies dying. Right. These guys made a fortune off the Greek uh, destruction of Greece. They're going after the nation of Argentina right now. And um, the Obama administration, what they're worried about is that they're gonna, if they destroy... Argentina, these vultures that, that are backing Romney, and that's their plan right now. They're demanding like $200 billion or something crazy from Argentina, which caused the entire collapse of the nation. They don't want to have a non-nation. As soon as you have a non-nation, you, it becomes kind of a terrorist uh, free zone. You know, it's a free operation zone. Non-states, failed states as they call them. Mm. Uh, if you end up with a failed state in Latin America, the size of Argentina, we got a big problem. So that's one of the reasons why um, Hillary Clinton said, no, these guys can't do this. If they destroy Argentina, we got a monster problem. It's not even a question whether they we're sympathetic with the people of Argentina. We can't have a failed state in Latin America. Um, um, just basically free-for-all. That's kind of what's beginning to happen in Mexico. With basically, uh, um, It's basically a drugocracy at this point. Greg Palace on the Black Tower Show, broadcasting 1590 AM WASB, Brockport, Rochester, 1310 AM WRSB, Canandaigua, Rochester. If you'd like to call in 585-637-7040, I'm joined by Jake Fox. Hey, um, Greg, um, Hmm? there's a group of a handful of guys, five or six men, that uh, donate 90% of the super PAC money all of these candidates are getting. One of them is Peter Thiel. Uh... Bilderberg uh, member, uh, if you want to get conspiratorial, it's a it's a spooky kind of group of corporatists, whatever. I mean, I think you can get conspiratorial d- these days with with the LIBOR scandal coming out. There there is some sort of something collusion going on there, but yeah. well, they, they they have you know their meetings. I mean, they um they call it collusion conspiracy. You're just kind of getting together, hanging out, and coming up with their plans to eat us live. You know, it depends how you want to look at it. But um, that's why I call the book Billionaires and Ballot Ban. It's because I want people to understand that vote theft, we, we see people like the operatives, like Carl Rove, or we see people like Catherine Harris. Those are just the, the kind of operators in the system, the kind of election hit men and hit women that they use. But right. it is the billionaires behind it. They need, you know, the databases are not, you know, those, someone funds all this stuff and funds it deliberately. They know what they're doing. And so I name about, I I concentrated on about a dozen various billionaires, and they do gather. They do gather, uh, one of their big gatherings, for example, is in Vail, Colorado, uh, where uh, the Cokes keep a, um, uh, have an annual meeting. And, for example, Chris Christie, who was one of their favorites, and look out for him in 2016, you know, he secretly flew into uh, Vail to have his little uh, gathering with the billionaires, which are Langone and, and uh, the Koch brothers and Paul Singer. The whole crew of billionaires mm-hmm. was there, including Ice and, and of course, very important, Billionaires Balabanis opens up with Iceman Simmons. Again, I don't give these guys like the vulture Iceman. I don't give them their names. Um, they're, the bankers give them their names. Iceman is one of the cruelest, most heartless um, uh, kind of corporate raiders out there. Uh, you know, um, and his thing is he took over National Lead, mm. which is infamous for poisoning hundreds of thousands of kids with that Dutch boy 
that wonderful white color you have in Dutch Boy paint came from lead. Right. And kids eat that stuff and mental retardation, poisoning, all kinds of stuff happens. And um, he bought the company out of bankruptcy and then basically used his political uh, force to um, basically ban lawsuits, Shoot. knock out the lawsuits to get, uh, by the victims of lead poisoning. And so then his lead company was became worth a fortune. It's funny. I'm sure if you ask these people... That they would say that they're they're just doing a service. They're using the system that's already in place to make more money. Uh, yeah. It, you know, I mean, you could make the argument that it is the system itself that is corrupt. That there's an underlying. If you're going to buy into this, you have to well, become corrupt. I mean. Well, the question is, I mean, there is a split. You know, as I've said, and you'll see in the book, you got the Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan's and the city banks. Who uh, you know? They're they're the giant sucker squids, right? right. And um, but you know, these uh, you know a, a parasite, a vampire squid is needs to keep you alive, to keep sucking your blood. Vultures want you to die. It's a, it's a, it may seem like a minor distinction if you're a victim, but it's a big distinction in a way. If you really make money from the destruction of economy, as opposed to just kind of taking. See, and also these guys like to keep taking a big hunk of the economy, like Citibank, like Robert Rubin, um, who is a big believer that you got to leave a little bit on the table for the mice to eat, you know. But right. um, you know, we go back to Koch's statement, I want my fair share, and that's all of it. He couldn't leave let the, the Indians alone, for God's sake. I mean, it's like, it was, it's actually, I don't know, to me, I, maybe I just have a different set of morals. It, it actually appears to me pathologic. Why would a billionaire literally be, I mean, why even bother sitting there in Oklahoma at some truck depot telling people to steal oil when you're worth billions? So don't you have something more interesting to do? Uh, um, you know, it's like, it, it, it's almost greed poisoning. Right. And so you could say it's a system, but the system has all kinds of many twists and, and angles um, and so, therefore, it is our system, so I guess all we can do is, is take control as much as we can. That's the point of the vote, I suppose, and, you know, to the extent we can protect it. I mean, in the end, right. people have always uh, formed movements which do make a difference. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got uh, Paul from Brighton. Paul from Brighton, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys? Did you have a question for Mr. Greg Pallast? Yeah, I'm just curious if he thinks that um, if Ron Paul took any dirty money during this election process. Paul Ryan taking dirty money. What are your thoughts on that? Paul Ryan. Um, oh, yeah. Um, oh, my God, yes. Um, Ryan is a creature of Paul the Vulture Singer. <laughs> <laughs> 